Hey there, Deanna Grash here at True Girl Headquarters with my cushy little new pillow that I'm so proud of. TJ Maxx, my friends, TJ Maxx. Um, I want to take a, just a few little minutes and get you into God's Word. We call this Wednesdays in the Word. We do it every Wednesday at noon. We dive into the Bible for a little scriptural snack. And today, I want to talk to you about loneliness, specifically your daughter's loneliness. Do you notice that your daughter is lonely? Do you notice that her friends are lonely? I can show you that the solution is the Bible. I can also show you what the problem is and give you some tips on what you might do to fix that. So that's what we're going to tackle today as we go into God's Word. Again, our key verse is John 8, 31 and 32. If you abide in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We're going to abide in it and it's just a way of reminding us to abide in it all week long. I'm going to give you two really cool ways you can do that with me this week. All right, so loneliness. Um, here's a chart I want you to see. Check it out. This is teenagers and the growth of loneliness. Look at this. From 2006 to now, it's like a hockey stick. Okay, hockey stick up. That is not good. They often feel lonely or they often feel left out. The black line is often feeling left out. The blue line is often feeling lonely. That is called hockey stick growth. Anytime you see hockey stick growth, there's something significant happening in the culture. What happened about the year 2006? Do I hear smartphone? Do I hear social media? Yeah, you'd be right. The smartphone was introduced right about then, the first iPhone, and also social media, Facebook went public. Uh, right about then, it had been a popular college uh, online app, but it wasn't that big of a deal in the overall public, but it went public. And then uh, followed quickly by MySpace, if you remember back then, <laughs> and Twitter, which still, we're still tweeting. So uh, since then, we have seen growth in the amount of hours that individuals are spent with their phone in their face. The average teen girl today spends nine plus hours a day with her phone in her face. So uh, what's the result? Loneliness. You might say, I don't know if that's really contributing to it. Well, you can see the same hockey stick, only the other direction of going back to this date that they're not hanging out with their friends. So it's not that the phone is bad, it's not that social media is bad. They can be good, they can be used for good things, but I think sometimes the way that we're using them is not good. Now I wanna share with you a really encouraging statistic. I've been watching a website called Back to the Bible, backtothebible.org, and they have a whole research page on how the Bible actually impacts our lives. It's a really good research, it's also got some um, Different, different research about why kids are leaving, why kids aren't reading their Bibles, why we're not reading the Bibles. Their research really, the my main purpose of their research is to figure out why, this is their, what it says, why so many people own Bibles, but so few of them read them. Fascinating research. And I want you to see this number here. Um, this is one of the most, the four biggest factors in the lives of any individual who reads the Bible. And uh, we're going to ignore all these other numbers over here because I'm not going to talk about them. But they're 30% less likely to feel lonely. If you abide in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Today I want to just share with you two really important Bible verses about loneliness. And the first one is from Psalm 25. Psalm 25. And why I think this would be an important Bible verse to share with your daughter if you think she might be struggling with loneliness or she has friends who are. Psalm 25, 16 to 21 says, Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me because of my hope. My hope is in you, Lord. Now you might say, well, that sounded like a party on the pages of scripture. <laughs> How is that going to help my lonely daughter? Let me tell you something. There is nothing lonelier than thinking you're the only one who's lonely. Let that one settle in your heart. Is that true? 
And there are, one of the things I find about the Bible to be so believable is that if I were going to make up a religion, I would whitewash the characters a little bit. <laughs> God doesn't. He lets us see all their brokenness. And there's lots of loneliness in the pages of scripture. Right now I'm writing a Bible study on Habakkuk. They call him the lonely prophet. One reason they call him that is because you only see him in the book of Habakkuk and then he kind of falls off the pages of scripture. Whereas in many of the other prophets show up in other books of the Bible, he doesn't. But also because he seems to be the only one in Judah, Israel, that still loves God and he feels lonely. Your daughter might not feel lonely because she's um, being suckered by her smartphone. She might feel lonely because she's the only one standing for Jesus. And it will be good to go into the pages of the Bible and see that she was not the only one that's lonely. That will do much, I think, to erase your loneliness. And maybe that's one reason why people who read the Bible are 30% less likely to be lonely. But um, God's answer to loneliness, I want to read this to you from 1 Peter chapter 2. Um, in fact, let me get to it because I'm not there right now. But you also need to take time if your daughter's struggling with loneliness. And you might be saying, your daughter, I'm struggling with loneliness. What you just said about it's lonely to be the only one who's lonely, that hit me right here. Well, then get into the Bible. I promise you there is freedom for you in there. In 1 Peter chapter 2, um, he, he, uh, Peter writes, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And I, I just think that's a verse of many to be like, do you feel lonely? You're chosen. Do you feel lonely and left out? You're royalty. And royalty does live differently. You're a holy nation. Holy nation? Holiness means to be set apart, to be different. There might be some loneliness to come with that. You're God's special possession. His special possession. The unique one. The one you don't put with all the others. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And then the third thing I just want to share with you. One, there's Bible verses in here that will help your daughter know she's not the only one that's lonely. And you're not the only one that's lonely. There's Bible verses in here that will make sense of the loneliness. You're chosen, royal, holy, special. And the other thing is this. Um, I, just, I just think that uh, sometimes our loneliness is so we can find friendship with the truest friend we'll ever know. I know that in periods of my life, this book was my best friend. Because I just didn't feel like I had one. And when I made this book my best friend, when God's word was what I spent my time with, he became my best friend. Don't be allergic to your daughter's loneliness. Take her to the word of God. And on that note, I want to say, I hope you've enjoyed this little spiritual snack. It's been good for my soul. Uh, there's two ways that you can dive into God's word so that you can know the truth and be set free. And the first one I want to tell you about is this. Right now, we have just begun Monday night, the first session of our teen girl Bible study. Lots of moms are doing this Bible study with their daughters. It's based on the book by Aaron Davis, A Beautiful Story. We're studying the lives of 10 Old Testament women to find out what does the Old Testament have to do with my New Testament life? And the stories of the girls who uh, joined us on Monday night for our first live Bible study, I was blown away. I was like, do they like this? Do they like us? Do they love us? Talk about feeling lonely. You can feel lonely right after you finish teaching. And they were so encouraged. They're doing their homework right now. It's not too late to join us. If you register you and your daughter right now, we'll get this book out to you as fast as we can. And right away today, we'll get you a link to Monday night's recording so you can get caught up by next Monday night when we have week number two. You can learn more about how to register for that at danagresh.com backslash online Bible studies. And the other way I want to invite you to join me in the Word is every single day on Revive Our Hearts. In the fall, I join my friend Nancy as a co-host on her program. And it's been my joy because I get to be in the Word. I Either I'm um, previewing the content before it's released, and a lot of times I'm listening to it in real time because I've just done a portion of the program 
but it's a great way to get into the Word. I use the Revive Our Hearts app on my smartphone. See, smartphones can be good, and I usually listen to it while I'm walking the dog. But dive in every day at reviveourhearts.com. You can learn more or download the Revive Our Hearts um, app. So, but all, all this to say this. Remember to get into God's Word because it truly will set your heart free. See you next Wednesday.